Hello everyone, this is TTOR. I will be hosting a live show on Thursdays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you want to join the show, bring a working microphone and either a webcam or an avatar. The link to the room will be in the live chat of the streaming locations that the live stream will be streaming to. God bless. If you're watching this video, then you are part of the TTOR army, an army that is building itself up one subscriber at a time. Today, as you can see from the topic and thumbnail of today's video, is the fourth and potentially final part of my series of videos responding to the YouTuber Traffiton and his campaign to get my friend Switch to Linux cancelled, not just from YouTube, but from the entire internet as well. Now, the first two parts were on YouTube as well as all of my alt tech channels. Part three was on all of my alt tech channels, but not here on YouTube. So if you're someone watching this video on YouTube and you're like, hey, where's part three? Go to my Rumble channel or my Quarter channel or my BitChute channel or any of my other alt tech channels and you will find part three on all of those channels. But part four is different because there is some new material that Trafiton put into the final version of his video hit piece on Tom. And basically there is one two, three clips in particular I'm going to respond to. It is at the 32 minute and 57 second mark of this video where we see Trafiton say the following. But I can run my mouth and I just feel like that wouldn't be enough. I actually want to read the Bible. What does the Bible actually say about queer identities? What does, how does it say that Christians are supposed to love each other? Well, on queer identity, the answer is actually not that interesting. There's nothing. The Bible never addresses modern issues about gender identity or sexual orientation at all. So, as you saw in that clip, Trafiton falsely claims that the Bible does not address sexual orientation. Now, if you watched part two of my video series, then you would know how stupid this is. I've already debunked this idea. But for the sake of this video, and because I'm going to have to do this in every video regarding people questioning the Bible's teachings on homosexuality, we're going to go through two Old Testament passages and two New Testament passages that specifically condemn the sexual orientation of homosexuality. Which, by the way, before we get into that, Trafiton, um, you should know, if you Google LGBTQ on their search engine, you learn that LGBTQ is an acronym for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer. Lesbians and gays fall into the category of homosexuality, which is considered a sexual orientation. Lesbians are female homosexuals and gays are male homosexuals. And now that we know that lesbians and gays fall under the category of homosexuality, which is a sexual orientation, let's turn to the Bible. Leviticus 18.22 Do not have sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman. That is detestable. Leviticus 20.13 If a man has sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman, both of them have done what is detestable. They are to be put to death. Their blood will be on their own heads. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 9-11 through 11. 
Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. And of course, Romans chapter 1, 26 through 27. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lusts. Even their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations of women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. So, as we can see from the quotations from the Old and New Testaments, homosexuality is condemned every time it is brought up in the Bible. In Romans 1, 26 through 27, it even makes a distinction between lesbians and gay men because it talks about in verse 26 how women exchange sexual relations with men for unnatural ones, which is with each other. And verse 27 says that men did the same thing. So clearly, the Bible condemns the sexual orientation of homosexuality. Clearly, it condemns lesbianism, which would be the L in the LGBTQ, and it condemns gay men, which would be the G in LGBTQ. The reason why I bring this up is because if you go to the first draft of Trafferton's hit piece on Tom on Switch to Linux, and you go to his section called Losing the Primaries, which is where he condemns Tom for using secondary sources instead of primary sources in his video, you read the following. The first thing I want to make clear about Tom's videos is if you watch enough of them, you can tell from the sources that he pulls from our secondary sources. This isn't always the case, but he pulls from many, let's say, less than reputable news websites. You know, the run-of-the-mill website that hires broke college dropouts to vomit out content. For example, in this clip of him reading the news, he references a Tech Radar article which just parrots information from a report by Trellix. In the same live stream, he uses 9to5 Linux, Alternative 2, OMG Ubuntu as primary sources, even though they just rip off content from other Linux contributor blogs and the like. Some might call this a nitpick, but with research, it's important to locate the original content or media. Unlike most forms of journalism, tech journalism is widely available, and you can often cross-compare the original content against the people who just summarize it. It shows you went the extra mile to read an unbiased take without any middleman. This also shows a lack of care. In the case of the Tech Radar article, Tech Radar links the original Trellix report. Now, Murawski could have easily showed this, but he didn't, probably because he isn't reading the article enough. It shows a blatant degree of unprofessionalism and research. He doesn't even take the effort to show the primary source, even if it's linked directly in the article. You get the sense as he read the article before turning the camera on, yet couldn't be bothered to locate the primary source. So according to Trafferton, when Tom quotes secondary sources instead of primary sources in his videos, he is showing an extreme lack of care and he's showing a blatant degree of unprofessionalism in his research. And yet, what do we see Trafferton do with the Bible and homosexuality and Christianity? He doesn't go to the primary source of Christian theology, which is the Bible. Instead, he goes to theology books written by other human beings, as well as friends of his who are so-called Christians, all of which fall under the category of secondary source at best. So when Tom quotes secondary sources and talking about tech subjects, that's bad because there's tech journalism widely available everywhere. But the Bible is even more widely available than tech journalism articles are, and yet Trafferton refuses to go to the Bible and its passages about homosexuality, which is the primary source of information about the Christian view of homosexuality, and instead Trafferton goes to secondary sources in order to talk about the Bible. 
by going to secondary sources to talk about the Bible and homosexuality instead of the primary source, which is the Bible itself, specifically Leviticus 18.22, Leviticus 20:13, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, and Romans 1, 26 through 27. By doing this, Trafferton is not only being a major hypocrite, but he's showing an extreme lack of care and a blatant degree of unprofessionalism in his research into the Bible, Christianity, and what they say about homosexuality. But then, in the next clip, to my great shock and awe, Trafferton actually does address all of the passages I brought up, and he does it in the following seven-second clip. People will point to popular verses like Leviticus or Sodom and Gomorrah, Romans, but they just, none of them are just applicable. But the- <laughs> Oh, really? So as you guys just heard in that seven-second clip, Trafferton falsely claims that all the Bible passages I just brought up in this video that I quoted that condemn homosexuality, all of those passages no longer apply today. Now, there are several things I have to say about that. First one, this claim of his is an arbitrary claim that he doesn't even attempt to provide evidence for. Because if I were to continue to play the video, he would then transition into the rest of what he said about this topic, which I already covered in part two. So he literally makes the arbitrary and false claim that the Bible passages on homosexuality that I quoted in part two and in this video no longer apply today. Well, there's multiple problems with that. The first one is that if you actually did a study of the Bible itself and what it says, you would know about passages like Romans 7-7, seven, seven, Trafferton, where it says, What shall we say then? Is the law sinful? Certainly not. Nevertheless, I would not have known what sin was had it not been for the law. For I would not have known what coveting really was if the law had not said, you shall not covet. And this is the Bible passage that proves that even though the civil punishments of the Old Covenant were overturned and undone when the New Covenant came via the New Testament, the moral teachings, the principles that were taught by the Old Testament Covenant still apply today, according to Paul here in Romans 7.7. 7. So, even though a lot of people want to say that the Leviticus passages that condemn homosexuality no longer apply today because, well, you see, you know, they were Old Covenant and we have the New Covenant, so everything in the Old Covenant is undone, including the passages condemning homosexuality in Leviticus. Well, that's not true because according to Romans 7.7, 7, the principles of Leviticus 18.22 and Leviticus 20.13 still apply even if the death penalty part does not. But even if we go along with this nonsense and say, okay, let's throw out the entire Old Testament, including the passages in Leviticus that condemn homosexuality, you still have 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, and Romans 1, 26 through 27, which crystal clearly condemn homosexuality and even specifically condemn lesbianism and gay men. Even the most basic of research into Christianity will inform you, Trafferton, that Christians today are bound at least by what's written in the New Testament. And the New Testament specifically condemns homosexuality just like the Old Testament does. So for you to sit there in your little video and say that 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11 and Romans 1, 26 to 27 don't apply today... That is completely and utterly false from a Christian worldview, from the biblical worldview. It may not be true according to your secular worldview, Trafferton, but according to the biblical worldview, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, and Romans 1, 26 through 27, and the Leviticus passages apply today for Christians. When you skip ahead to the 40 minute and 10 second mark of this video, you see Trafferton say the following. I mentioned in my first draft that there was a lot of other content creators involved. And I actually watch most videos all the way through because 
including patron crawls and stuff, because I always want to find new ways to improve my own content. However, for Morosky, it was just a little different. I was watching the title crawl to see who exactly supports this channel and why they do it. But I came to something that I never considered when I wrote that first draft of my page. And when it was brought up to me, I thought it was very interesting. Morosky has actually failed to update his supporter credits at all. Now, one of the things that I brought up in my original document was Tech Hut. Yeah, that Tech Hut was giving to Morosky at one point, but stopped. And Morosky had actually been featured on some of Tech Hut's videos before, and Tech Hut has signal boosted Morosky's content in the past. But there's actually consequences to Morosky not editing his credits. Since Morosky never updated his credits, Tech Hut actually stopped giving to him because he just wasn't making use of Morosky's patron benefits. But even though he stopped giving to him, Morosky hasn't updated the credits. And since Morosky never updated the credits, Tech Hut's name appears on some of Tom's awful videos. Even though Tech Hut was never paying him. That means that anyone whose names appeared on the credits aren't actually paying him currently and are now on videos which actively spread misinformation and hate, and it's upsetting. So, as we saw in that clip, Trafferton claims that because TechCut and one other person aren't actually Patreon supporters of Tom, even though his outdated credits said they were, this means that nobody on that credits list is an actual Patreon supporter of Tom. The only thing that Trafferton actually proved in this clip is that Tech Hut specifically is not a current supporter of Tom through Patreon. But that's all you've proven. You have not proven that every single person on that Patreon credit scrawl list is not currently a supporter of Tom. This is what is known as a non sequitur. It does not logically follow that because one person on Tom's Patreon scrawl credits list is not a current supporter of Tom's, that it does not logically follow that the rest of them are also not on Tom's actual Patreon subscriber list at this time. You would actually have to go through that list and locate each and every person on that list and see if they're a current supporter or not. Of course, the problem with this is that when Trafferton thought that Tech Cut was a current supporter of Tom through Patreon, he was actually planning on blasting on Tech Cut in this video. Back in the first draft of his script, he has a whole section titled Tech Cut Gives to Morowski, and he wrote the following. The most disturbing thing about Morowski's supporter crawl is one of the names that stood out to me. Tech Hut. I did a double take when I first saw that and thought it couldn't be true. Tech Hut to this day continues to donate to switch to Linux, and you can verify this by visiting the Tech Hut Discord and see Brandon himself has signal boosted some of Morowski's videos in the past. Indeed, it's the real Tech Hut. To be fair, this brought more questions to my mind. Is Tech Hut aware of all of Morowski's content? And since he's been giving, that's right, Tech Hut's name is on the Open SUSE Hates Half the World video, among many of Morawski's other offending videos. And I know I pronounced that name wrong, Tom. Please forgive me. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. People do have a natural inclination to be put off by the weekly news roundup. Maybe the algorithm hides the worst videos, but I know Tech Hut's been supporting Morowski for years. Morowski hasn't changed at all and continues to inject his political garbage into videos. You'd have to be really ignorant at this point to not know what kind of person Morowski is. I spoke with Nicole Love, who helps write the Tech Hut newsletters. I actually shared with him some of my ideas about Morowski in parallel to work he's doing about Brian Lunduke. But Niccolo is on fire for LGBT plus liberties and representation, and I asked him about Tech Hut, and he was not aware at all. But we both have questions for Tech Hut, and it's time to own up to it. Tech Hut, if you are aware of Switch to Linux's hate content, you will pull your funding for February 2024. Mistakes happen, so don't go after him, but if you're still here, you need to let Tech Hut know, because if he isn't aware of Morowski's hate content, he needs to know now. But anyone who continues to support Morowski, you are supporting technological misinformation, hate, and the downward spiral of Morowski's mental state. So as you can see in the script I just read that he can from his final video, 
he was planning on doing a blast of Tech Hut for daring to support Tom financially through Patreon. Now, lucky for Trafferton, Tech Hut reached out to him when the first draft came out and corrected the record and said that he had not been supporting financially to switch to Linux for many months now. And that's when Trafferton scrapped this whole section from his video. But make no mistake, Trafferton was planning on doing a blast of Tech Hut if Tech Hut was currently supporting Tom financially through Patreon. Which means that Trafferton plans to put on blast all of the people who financially support Tom through crowdfunding platforms like Patreon in order to financially deplatform Tom as a content creator, which is literal cancel culture stuff. Now, of course, Tom saw everything I just read, and so when he put out his recent video titled Trafferton's False Accusations, at the 14 minute and 8 second mark of the video, he had to say the following about what Trafferton did here. Um, he says he watches the videos all the way through, including Patreon title crawls. That, If that's true, he's not comprehending them. Um, he then decides he wants to go through the channel title crawl to see who's exactly supporting it. I redacted all this because this first person is somebody that does not want to be on this, involved in this, and I completely support that. In fact, when the person, and I redacted his name and image, he says, my name appears in your diatribe for the record. I shut down my Patreon long ago. I no longer support any content creators, Linux, or otherwise. Please correct your error and remove my name. I want no part of this nonsense. Uh, Dio Titus agrees. He says, tell that to Tom. He doesn't say, oh, thank you for the correction. I will update my notes. No, he still wants to pit people against each other. So the OP or uh, the um, the uh, person whose name appears says, I'm aware. I'm informing you directly. Now you know your document contains false information. Revise it or amend it. I'm sure Tom will correct his credits. Okay. If there is one thing you can accuse me too of is that the end credits of my video are generally out of date. Because I have so many supporters from so many networks, it's really hard to keep a balance. That is certainly a uh, an error on my end of not keeping it as up to date. However, because this person, as illustrated by his document itself, is literally seeing who is in my end screen and intentionally trying to go after them, I will be going forward removing everybody who supports me from my channel because, hey, you want to attack me as the YouTuber, you enjoy yourself. By the way, you're not going to win. But I do not want you going after the people who support me. So I added that because some of the supporters wanted their name at the end of the videos. But because people are literally spreading misinformation about me, I have just decided we're going to be closing those out after the last round of edited and prepared videos are already out. So that is going to be one little change. So in response to Trafferton's plan to put on blast anyone who supports Tom financially through something like Patreon, Tom has decided that he's now going to remove all of the Patreon supporter credit scrawls at the end of his videos going forward. At least all the new ones. His next couple videos may still have those scrawls at the end, but they were produced and put together before this. Now, we're going to resume playing the video here, and it is from the 4137 mark through the 4209 mark, where we see Trafferton say the following. The last thing I want to do is, remember how I mentioned a while ago about how uh, Murowski handled the paper draft? And that's when he brought I read the Matrix. And instead what he did was he tried to rally his community to conduct research on me. He attempted to email Brody. He attempted to email Tech Hut. All nice touches. And I feel like he was trying to leverage his internet points to try to take down an opinion. An opinion that kind of contradicts that ivory tower of self-righteousness he built. So, as we saw in that clip there... Trafferton falsely claims that Tom engaged in sneaky behavior and that Tom is trying to get Trafferton's speech suppressed. As we can see from the conversation screenshot that Trafferton showed on screen, Tom was actually trying to give his side of the story to someone who is more open-minded to truth than Trafferton is. 
because you see Tom as switched to Linux saying, LOL, someone just asked the question, and then he quotes someone from the comment section of Trafferton's community post about the first draft of the script, and the person said, You sound salty. Have you tried talking to him privately? And then Tom answers the question and says, The answer is no. In fact, he did not reach out to Tech Hut either. I emailed Tech Hut, and Tech Hut responded to the thread. So the only reason why Tech Hut ever responded to Trafferton's community thread about his upcoming video and corrected the record on it is because Switch to Linux reached out to him. Not Trafferton, Switch to Linux. And then notice what this other person says to Tom. Brody Robertson is going to feature this in one of his upcoming videos. He commented on one of the comments. Switch the Linux says, does anyone have Brody's contact info? I would love to give him corrections. I am confident that the OP does not want corrections. Which, if Trafferton's too dumb to understand what Tom just said, what Tom is saying is that he wants to contact Brody so that he can give his side of the story and point out all the false things that Trafferton was saying in the first draft of his script. He was not trying to get Trafferton's thoughts on Tom suppressed. He was not trying to get the video banned before it ever hit the internet or anything stupid like that. He wasn't trying to suppress Trafferton's speech in any way, shape, or form. And yet Trafferton has the nerve to post something like this where Tom is not trying to get Trafferton's speech suppressed and says, Oh, Tom is trying to suppress my speech. He's got this ivory tower of self-righteousness and he's trying to suppress my speech so that I can't criticize him. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, at this point in this series, in this video, the only person in this entire mess of a situation that is trying to suppress anybody's speech is Trafferton himself. If you go to his community post, which is still public on his channel, by the way, but I have archived in the description box down below in case he tries to be sneaky and delete this later, he said... I will be launching a coordinated effort with Niccolo Vey about his channel. Then if you agree, we need to continuously criticize him so his channel can't recover or until he realizes he's a jerk and apologizes, which I find unlikely given his track record. He then also says, that every video made by Switch to Linux, I want to make sure the community disavows him and understands how reprehensible his actions are because when it comes to things like hurting people over their religion, sexuality, or way of life, that's not okay. And then if you go to the first draft of his script where he says Morawski's online career needs to end, he wrote the following. I've covered a lot of topics today, but what can we do about it? The easiest thing you can do is stop watching his videos and unsubscribe if you are. Now here's the part that he cut out of his final video. Report the hate content in his videos that slips through the cracks on YouTube. Start spreading the word to all content creators you know. Let them know that this man is ruining the Linux community and he needs to be stopped. So in the first draft of his script and in his community post, Trafferton not only was calling for a coordinated harassment campaign against Tom, but he was going to originally incite his subscribers and other people watching to false flag Tom's videos until his YouTube channel got taken down and to flag him for violating YouTube's hate speech policy. So this turd burrito was literally planning to deplatform my friend off of YouTube and ultimately the entire internet by harassing the people who financially support Tom through Patreon. He's trying to organize a coordinated harassment campaign against Tom where they basically criticize him, allegedly, in every single video he puts out. And even though he deleted this from the final version of his video, Trafferton was originally planning to incite his viewers and subscribers to engage in a false flag campaign against Tom's YouTube channel, which literally violates YouTube's terms of service. 
To put it in the words of Trafferton when he was condemning Tom, Trafferton is a man who does not like the things that Tom espouses as a result of his Christian identity, and he is literally trying to suppress Tom's expression of his Christian identity on the internet. Trafferton is being an online bully. He's being a censorious authoritarian. He is the villain in this story. He is the bad guy. And yet he's trying to portray himself as a hero who's just trying to scourge the evil from the Linux community on YouTube. Now this may come off as not very nice and mean-spirited, but I'm going to call a spade a spade here. Trafferton is a garbage human being. He is a censorious authoritarian. He is an online bully. Everything he condemns and claims that Tom is like and he condemns Tom for, he is guilty of doing himself while he's condemning Tom. He is literally trying to suppress Tom's ability to express his Christian identity on the internet. And then at the same time, he's like, oh, no one's trying to suppress you on the internet because of your Christian views, Tom. It's just because you're a broken human being and you're just such an evil bigot. Of course, if Trafferton actually watches this video, which he might, and he sees what I just said, he may start a false flag campaign on my channel to get me taken down because I called him out for what he is. But you know what? If you do that and you succeed, it won't matter. Because just like Tom, I'm everywhere on the internet, baby. I'm on Rumble. I'm on BitChute. I'm on Odyssey. I'm on YouTube. I run my own YouTube alternative called Quarter, which is hosted by one of my friends. So you can never get that site to platformed. Not in a million years. So go ahead. Have your little hate campaign against Switch to Linux. And for that matter, add me to your list. Start the campaign to get me to platform from the entire internet. Go on. Go ahead. It's all you're good for because you're not the good guy in this equation. You're the villain. You're the bad guy. You're the unrepentant sinner who stands in rebellion against God. And until you come to a place where you humble yourself and repent to the Lord and repent from all of your evil ways and your sins that you have committed in your life, as well as in this video hit piece on Tom, until you get to that point, you're lost. But if you ever get to the point where you repent of your sins and submit to Jesus and have a personal relationship with him and start pursuing the Lord's will for your life, all will be forgiven and we will welcome you into the fold. But until then, you're the villain in this story, Trafferton. Mm -hmm.